Hey, podcast family, and welcome to another episode of the L3 Leadership Podcast, where we are obsessed with helping you grow to your maximum potential and to maximize the impact of your leadership. My name is Doug Smith, and I am your host. And in today's episode, you are going to get to hear me interview one of my bucket list interviews, Tony Horton. Many of you know him because he was the creator of P90X, and this is why um, Tony was a bucket list interview for me because my life was changed in 2008 uh, when someone let me actually borrow P90X as a workout program, and I got hooked. And uh, you know, long story short, ended up transforming my life, transforming my passion for um, health and fitness. And 12 years later, literally, I am still doing beach body workouts, uh, following the nutrition plans. And I go, I give all the credit back to Tony Horton because he just uh, created a program that I loved. I love him as a trainer. He is incredible. He fires me up. And I think he's hilarious. And uh, you'll see that throughout the interview as well. He's just as funny uh, behind the scenes as he is on video. So If you don't know about Tony, let me just tell you a little bit about him. Tony is the wildly popular creator of the best-selling fitness series, P90X. He also created P90X2, P90X3, The 10-Minute Trainer, 22-Minute Hard Corpse, and he's recently created his newest workout, which he partnered with Amazon Prime on, called Tony Horton's Next Level. And you'll hear him talk about that in the interview. And I encourage you, if you love Tony Horton and his workout programs, go and check out Tony Horton's Next Level. Uh, Tony is a world-class motivational speaker and author of top-selling books, Bring It, (laughs) Crush It, and his latest motivational book, The Big Picture, 11 Laws That Will Change Your Life. He's appeared on countless television programs as a fitness and lifestyle expert to promote healthy living through exercise and proper nutrition. In keeping up with Tony's passion for a healthy lifestyle, he's teamed up with beauty experts at Ultimate Salon Professionals to create his new hair and skin line products, TH Care by Tony Horton, because he believes what goes on Uh, What goes on your body is just important as what goes in your body. Tony believes that real and lasting change can happen when we commit to health as a lifestyle. Exercise, whole foods, and the right mindset is the formula that leads to a vibrant, productive, and full life for anyone who focuses on being the best they can be. This interview was incredible. Uh, We talk a lot about Tony's journey. I think you'll be highly inspired and encouraged by his journey. I know I was really surprised by it, and he shares some invaluable lessons that we can all Uh, apply to our lives daily as leaders. And so I hope you enjoy this interview. But before we dive in, just a few announcements. Hey, leader, I think it's more important now than ever that you have a community of leaders to do life and leadership with. And that's exactly why we created L3 Leadership. And we've spent the last three months revamping and relaunching our entire membership platform just for you. And it is absolutely incredible. We are more passionate now than we have ever been about developing leaders. And so we're actually, we believe in the product so much that we created that we are giving you your first two months of membership free. Now, when you become a member, you're going to get access to live webinars with nationally known leaders that you'll have access to um, for members only. You'll have access to all of our L3 one day talks. You'll get to connect with all the other L3 members and have a community of leaders to do life and leadership with and so much more. And so this offer for two free months is only good through May 1st. So make sure that you sign up today. We are absolutely thrilled with the fact that you could become an L3 leader. So join today. Well, hey, Tony, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. And uh, if there's anyone listening to this that doesn't know who you are, can you just give us a brief overview of who you are and, and what you do? Uh, well, I'm a trainer and I'm a writer and I do public speaking and a uh, motivational speaker and I have a supplement line and I have a brand new uh, fitness equipment line that will be coming out very soon. I've written three books. You know, I've been in the health and wellness industry for a long, long time. I started out as somebody who is a personal trainer to a lot of celebrities, you know, mostly rock and rollers. I kept rock and roll alive from the 60s and 70s. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> and Billy Idol and Tom Petty and Annie Lennox and, you know, other people you've heard of, maybe uh, Ewan McGregor and Bryce Dallas Howard and Allison Janney and, uh, and uh, you know, some movie stars too, Sean, Sean Connery. Submarines, oh. don't, submarines don't react well to bullets. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much. Shirley MacLaine, who was part of, you know, the only female member of the Rat Pack back in the old days. You know, I mean, I am 61, so I've been in this industry for a long, long, long time. And um, yeah, yeah, I guess that's sort of the very, very, very short version. I'm somebody who came up with, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough. I was a young actor and a comic and did some improv stuff. And so I had a, I had a lifestyle of trying to become an actor, but I was also a fitness trainer training all these celebrities and stuff. And so, and the two came together when I started working for Nordic Track uh, up in Minneapolis. Up there, you know, up there, you know, in Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, it was the pulp up there on a, in a vault, you know. 
anyway, so there's my Minneapolis accent. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. And, um, uh, you know, so I really was getting my chops on camera because I was able to walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, I mean, they would hire an actor. They didn't know much about exercise science or kinesiology or anything. And then, you know, they have a, a bodybuilder types or fitness people, and they weren't really spot on when it came to being on camera. And I was able to do that. So that was sort of my, my break-in point. And then I met a young entrepreneur named Carl Deichler, and he said, I want to do this thing called Great Body Guaranteed. Will you do it? And it was just another gig as far as I was concerned. It made some money. Wow. And, um, and then it made enough money. So they said, hey, let's do something called Power 90. And I, and I liked that idea. So I helped create that. And uh, I have dog hair on my nose. How about that? My dog <laughs> sheds, and I can feel this dog hair. Um, either that or I have a twitch. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and so we did Power 90, and it just, it just changed my life forever. I mean, it really was. We sold about three or four million copies of that, which was incredibly unexpected by everyone, even us. And then the next thing was P90X, which, you know, I didn't even think that was a good idea. I thought it was too extreme. And, uh, but he said, hey, I'll give you a year to really develop this thing. And so I, I talked Carl and the folks at Beachbody into creating this thing, which we invented eventually called uh, muscle confusion, which was really a lot of variety in fitness, you know, making people who lift weights do cardio, cardio folks lifting weights, adding in yoga, martial arts, all of it. And, you know, here it is 16 years later, and it's, it's, it's still not as popular, but, you know, that was really what established me and so you know now i walk through the airport of anywhere and people tap me on the shoulder and much like you doug who lost a bunch of weight doing p90x but then since then you know i've been still you know p90x x2 x3 22 minute hardcore one-on-one -on -one series you know I mean, we, we made a lot of incredible products it's a lot a lot of fun now i'm with guy mtv fit and yoga um uh, a program that people are loving called the next level and uh i'm working with two other companies to develop other fitness programs and you know, this um, challenge, these challenging times that we're in right now has prevented that from happening. Uh, but as soon as things normalize, air quotes, whatever that means, where people can get in the studio and shoot, uh, I hope the next two products are out by the end of the year. That would be really exciting. And yeah, if, tell, us about, tell us real quick about the next level. Like, where can people find it and what's the premise of the program? Well, if you have Verizon, Vios, Amazon Prime, Roku, I mean, almost any type of uh, uh, format, whether it be cable or satellite, um, you, you know, you just go to Guy and TV Fit and Yoga and um, you check it out. It's, it's called Next Level. And you sign up through your, your cable or satellite provider. And I believe uh, right now on Roku, it's 30 days free. Amazon Prime, 30 days free, because they're just kind of giving people a break, which is really a smart idea. Right yeah. Now. You have this thing that's going on. Just to kind of, and you can pretty much do every workout in the 30 days. There's 20, there's two seasons, season one and two, and there's 23 total workouts, and you can get them all in for free, uh, which is pretty cool. And, you know, if you don't have Roku or Amazon, there is Verizon and Vios and Spectrum and all these other versions that people have. So, uh, Gaim TV Fit and Yoga. It's kind of a mouthful, but that's how you get to it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll throw links in the show notes. Uh, man, you've had quite a journey, and, and I'm just curious, you know, what do you wish people knew about that journey that they may not know? They see everything you're doing now, what you did with P90X. Uh, what do you wish people knew? You know, I think, I think a lot, but they see you in this place where you, you know, you're successful, right? And you've reached whatever pinnacle of, of success. I think a lot of people assume that you've always had kind of a, uh, an, easy, an easy go at it which is certainly not the case. You know, I don't think, I mean, people think, oh, he was probably the captain of the football team, you know, and dated, dated the, uh, you know, uh, the cheerleaders and um, was always a pretty good student and, uh, and was always very ambitious. And none of those things are true. Hmm. You know, I was a C minus student with a speech impediment. I moved six times before fifth grade because my father was in the military. And then he got different jobs. So we got transferred. So, you know, I was always the smallest kid, the scrawniest kid. Uh, the speech impediment thing called cluttering didn't help me at all. You know, I was a target. I was the kid that got his lunch money stolen and shoved in the locker room, beat up at the bus stop, all that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So I was super, super insecure, and my life was filled with lots of fear and trepidation. And, um, uh, you know, and then I started doing some personal development uh, in college. You know, I read um, Your Erroneous Zones. I'm looking out for number one. I'm trying to think. It's not Zig Ziglar or Wayne Dyer, but it was somebody like that. And I really, I thought, wow, this is information I never got in school. You know what I mean? So it was a long and winding road, uh, as the Beatles would say for me. It didn't, it didn't start out very easily. But I always had this little voice in my head that said, you know, life can be a whole lot better. I don't know how to get there. And then I just started taking new information. You know, I was, I was going to these seminars, these personal development seminars. 
And it was, you know, it was above and beyond. It was just how to be a, a more productive, happier human being. Because I was not in a relationship. I was living in a, you know, a little two-bedroom apartment with a view of a convalescent home. Not, you know, car getting broken into and, and when I first came out here to L.A. And, you know, I was, a, I was a, somebody who was a handyman and a carpenter. And, and I was doing mime at the pier. I was a, you know, I was a trained mime back in college. <clears throat> what is, what's going on, Doc? I can't. Oh, oh, that's just the screen. Sorry. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And so when I was out of money... And that was often, I'd have to put on my outfit, my, my mime face, and go down to the pier or to, into UCLA, which was nearby, and put the hat down. And it's, it's no fun performing for food. Hmm. It's very different wow. than you just kind of on stage and you're sort of entertaining people. It's a different sensation. Because you're always looking down at your hat going, okay, is that enough money to go buy some yogurt and Cheerios? Wow. You know, then they would live on breakfast, lunch, and dinner for three days. Uh, you know, these were really, really hard times. And it took a long, long time. And the lesson in that is, you know, and everybody said, stop, get, move back to the East Coast. What are you doing out there? You can be a great this or that or the other thing. You know, you could be a restaurant manager. Or you, could, <clears throat> you, know, you could be a salesman or, a, or whatever. And I just, I just stuck with my vision. You know what I mean? And I just assumed that at some point, even though it took decades to get there, I mean, you know, making it, I didn't, I, you know, I was out of debt and I was, fam you know, I call myself a C-minus celebrity. I was quasi-famous and successful in my 40s. It took, it took. You know, it didn't happen in my 40s. I must, this journey started <clears throat> in my early 20s. I came out to California in 1980 when I was 21 years old. And so uh, it took a long, 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 long time. But I was not to be detoured. I was going to continue to fight the good fight. And I didn't know I was going to end up, um, you know, as a, as a well-known trainer. <clears throat> this book had a lot to do with it. It's funny. I've been doing a couple of podcasts. I've been bringing up this book, if you've ever read mm -hmm. the, Magic Lamp, the Magic Lamp by Keith Ellis. You know, um, it just sort of helps you figure out what, who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to follow your passion. And it would, you know, you, it would, there were these great lessons in there, like write down all the things you think you'd be able to do, things that you're interested in, and then pit one against the other. You know, you make a list here and a list here. Do you want to be a jet pilot and, or a movie star? Okay, I want to be a movie star. Do you want to be, and then you go all the way down, and eventually you're just stuck with two things. And it came out movie star and gym owner over and over again, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if I had to be, if I want to be, a, you know, a famous comedian, whatever, in the entertain, entertainment field or in the fitness field, ha <laughs> I got it in. <laughs> you know, so there you go. Can you, can you talk a little bit about tenacity and pursuing your dreams? Cause you stuck with it, didn't see success until you were in your forties, but I'm sure there was thousands of others that had similar aspirations that you did and, and ended up going back home and being a restaurant owner uh, or manager like, like so many people encourage you to do. Uh, what would you encourage people to do who, who may be trying and trying and trying and trying for years and they're still not seeing the traction that they want to see? What would you tell them? Well, you know, typically along the way, almost anybody who's trying to pursue their purpose or their passion, um, or that are, as the French would say, as their raison d'etre, <clears throat> is they come into roadblocks and the roadblocks are enough to s sort of kill the journey. So they go back to doing some other, you know, menial job that pays the bills. <clears throat> when I was an acting, when I was an actor and I had a acting coach, the acting coach said, you know, I want you all to know, and it was a class of 30 plus of us. In this thing. He would say, as much as you all love this, this business, it's one of the most brutal in the world. And you probably know that already because of all the auditions you've gone on and all the gigs you never got, you know, and that's just the na nature of it. And you're here in this class, honing your skills. And I, I hope the very best for all of you. And this is, his name was Daryl Hickman. He was amazing, a great mentor. Um, and that's another thing when it comes to, you know, pursuing your dreams, finding mentors. And I'll get to that in a second. But, you know, he said to everybody, you better find a second passion. You better find a second one. And you might not love it as much as you love this, but you better find, it better be something close. And I don't know what that is. And if you don't know what that is, then you're going to, you know, then you're going to flounder maybe for a long, long time. You know, you're going to live in that studio apartment with a view of the train station into your fifties because you're pursuing this act, acting career. And all you ever got was a, you know, was a, a sleep aid commercial. You know, I mean, this, the, the idea is, that, yeah. is, to, is to be successful and to be happy and to be able to afford things and have the life that you want. And it might not happen here. So, you know, what, am I, what, am I, what I tell people is if you keep banging your head against the wall, <clears throat> even if you have a tremendous tenacity and even if you're really organized and if, even if you are, surround yourself with the right kind of people, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, then you better find a second thing. So I had my fitness business and I had my acting career and I was very fortunate that those two things came together. And it could have been just one or the other. I don't know. But I got a combination of the two. Um, and, and the other thing is, you know, you can't, be, you can't be the kind of person 
who is overly attached to the outcome, right? You know, the past is history, the future is a mystery. You got right now, how much, you know, who are you going to surround yourself with? Find, you know, get rid of the chaff in your life. Get rid of the people who are the naysayers and the finger pointers and the ones who aren't really supporting your journey and telling you to do something else because that becomes very confusing. You know what I mean? And so um, that that's super important. And, and you've got to really, you know, one of the things for me, I had a conversation in a, in a, in a podcast yesterday. You know, they were asking me like, what were all, well, what were all the things that you felt that you needed to be to be successful? You know, and, and it's wow. funny. Uh, and, and I'll repeat, you know, authentic, bold, funny, articulate, innovative, camera ready. You know, you got to be ready to get on camera and knock it out of the park. And you can't be intimidated by this little silly piece of, uh, you know, this lens in front of you. Um, you know, my industry is super fit. Like there's a lot of people who do this who are, remember the first time you went through P90X? You did the program, but you didn't eat right. No, you had to do both, you know. Um, and, and, and expanding your vocabulary, knowing the difference between didactic and pedantic. You, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, you can't be saying um and uh and like and bro. And, you know, I say you know too much, but that's something I have to work on. And you've got to be encouraging and well-groomed. Hello. You know, you got to be stylish. There's a lot of things. I mean, I mean honestly, you've got to, you've got to be extraordinary in your field. You have to stand out uh, amongst the others. And those are really, really important things. And you have to work on those things. And for me, you know, I was going to acting classes, improv classes, doing stand-up comedy, um, going to scene study classes, going to the gym five, six days a week, and showing up at these auditions getting rejected over and over and over again. And, and, and being patient, I think patience is, is really, really important. And just keeping, you know, your eye on the prize. But, but you got to at some point go, okay, this isn't working, whatever this is. Is there a second option? You know, what is that second career? Uh, there's a great story of a, um, of a gentleman uh, who I didn't know, but a friend of mine knew him. And I love this story because it just, it's just so pinpoints, um, you know, how to, be, how to find your, your raison d'etre, your purpose. So he was a brilliant math guy, you know what I mean? He was a great accountant and he got to work with this great firm. And, and that was, really wasn't his thing. He loved, you know, he loved mountain biking and, and any kind of biking. He just loved bicycles. You know, that was his deal. So, you know, he, he got married and had kids and, you know, he moved his way up through this firm, but he's still in a box, you know, amongst other people, you know, looking at a fake fern and, you know, four walls. And every Saturday and Sunday, he, you know, he would sneak away or he'd ask his wife and, or bring his kids to the bike shop, his, his local bike shop in his town. And he was there so much that the manager said, hey, you know, you know more than half of my staff. You want to you work here like on a Saturday? So oh my, he thought, oh, my God, it would be amazing, right? So he goes back and his wife was awesome and said, well, you're there anyway. You might as well get paid to do it, right? So he started working Saturdays. Then sometimes he works Saturdays and Sundays. And anyway, long story short, five years later, he owned the place. Wow. He owned the place, right? So you've got this thing where you pay the bills and you make some money and it may not be what you want, but your hobby could turn into the thing that you love and could really change your life forever. Uh, and that, I don't know, who knows, that story is, is 18, 20 years old. So, you know, you know, you might have eight bike shops by now. I think. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, I'm curious, you know, you talked about the things you thought you had to be or wanted to be. Uh, fame wasn't on there, but I am curious. I, I've, I've been watching the live has gone rock or I'm sorry, the rock has gone live a few times recently. And, and people are saying, Hey, uh, do you like being famous? Do you, do you hate it? Do you love it? And I just think it's an interesting question. And, you know, I know you say you're a C-level celebrity, but you're very, very well. C-minus. 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 There we go. My apologies. <laughs> um, but uh, I am curious, what did you learn about becoming known or becoming famous? And uh, do you like it? Do you hate it? What's that like? You know, you know what? In all the interviews I've done, this is why you're, you're good at this. I've never been asked that. <clears throat> I've never been asked that. And uh, I think I've sometimes brought it up on my own just because it sort of led into one part of the question. Um, I, I like it 97% of the time. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, I, I really do. I think I was probably a, you know, if there's past life, I was a politician or something, you know, I, maybe I was <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt or something when I was, uh, you know, in another life. Um, I, because A, because I had the kind of career that is different than maybe a, a musician or, 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 or an actor, right? Because people like that person's music or they like their films. Um, but, I, but what I've been able to do is I, I've been able to change people's lives in the process of them seeing me. And when they, <clears throat> I don't know what this is. I hope it's not COVID-19. 
Um, you heard it. You heard it first on the. I heard it first. Podcast. Tony's, Tony's yeah. the goner. I'll, yep, I'll be in intensive care within the hour. Um, I don't know. I shouldn't even kid around about that. But um, you know, so that's that's different. People are seeing me five, six, seven days a week for months at a time and years at a time. So, and in the process, they're changing physically, mentally, and emotionally, and even spiritually in some cases, I would think. And um, and that's a different kind of. I, I have a greater obligation. So I feel like I have a greater obligation when somebody comes up to me and, and they say to me, because they don't say to Sean, to, to a cel- other kind of, you changed my life. Hey, <laughs> Billy Crystal, you changed my life. Or, hey, Tom Hanks, you changed my life. You know what I mean? No, but hey, I really right. like you in that movie. And, and uh, so I, I feel mm, very compelled uh, to have that conversation, to, to engage with that person. I, I mean, I sign every autograph. I'll take every selfie. You know, I never say no, you know, except for those few times where I'm, you know, I'm, I'm rushing through an airport and I'm trying to catch a plane or maybe I'm sitting down in my, you know, you know, my meal and somebody taps me on the shoulder and they want to have a conversation with them at a restaurant. You know, I mean, there's a few times where it's not a whole lot of fun. But, um, but the other part of that answer is there's no course that shows you how to go from total obscurity to being recognized. There's nothing that, you know what I mean? And so your character comes into play, you know, who you are as an individual, because so many people, you know, whoever, they're, they're thriving, they're, they're, they're striving for their, you know, their purpose. And um, maybe they weren't terribly char- uh, char- charismatic or friendly to begin with. And so now they're thrust into the situation to have to engage with people when they don't want to. And so there's nothing worse than when you, you know, you finally meet somebody you really admire and, and then they act like a bonehead. You know what I mean? And I've seen it. I, I know people in my industry and I know people in other industries that just treat their, the public like crap. And it just blows my mind. You know, I just wow. I can't. I, I don't know why they would do that. You know what I mean? Because it's those people that they're coming up to say hello. They're allow, allowing them to have their lifestyle. And they're allowing them to be stars of whatever it is on stage or screen. And then they treat them like crap. I, I don't, it blows my mind. So, you know, I always feel very, very obligated to, uh, to do it. Occasionally it's, it's a little hard, but yeah, I was going to say, what's hard. the, what's the three, three and a half percent you don't like. Yeah. The put people like, I'm, you know, in the middle of like twirling, right. spaghetti, and they're like, dude, Oh, whoa. Yeah. And I, Hey, what? Do you mind if I hold on, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, or Makes people sense. who are, um, you know, they're not stalkers, but, but they're just, you know, you meet some quirky, odd, folks that you would never meet otherwise and these are the types of people who feel like well i've seen you in my house every day for months and months and months so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna try to get into my world you know what i mean they're trying to they're you know they're not outside the doors there's been a couple <laughs> but, but but uh yeah they're just you know you meet some oddballs and and, you, and some and that i don't know how to, i'm not trained for how to deal with that you know, i'm cordial and nice and friendly but you know like people will like people will drop to their knees <laughs> are you serious get up get uh, oh man up. get up what are you doing yeah. come on you know what I mean? because if they've lost 180 pounds or whatever it is it, it's it's so transformative wow. that they, they you know they get kind of a um i don't know what that complex is called hero complex and they you know they they think i'm somebody super super special and i'm just a dude struggling like anybody else who happened to make something that worked you know what i mean yeah, talk about that. Uh, you know, you talked about you had to put in decades of work to, um, until you really took off. What was it like after P90 came out and P90X? Like, was it as satisfying as the the journey to get there? Was it a letdown and you were like, is this it? I'm just curious how you reacted to, quote unquote, what some people would see as arriving. No, I think when you're in the middle of it, that's a great, another great question. Jane, geez, you're good, dude. So, so when you're in the middle of it and it's going really well and you're, and you're, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're at the very beginning of the creative process. All right. So where should this workout be? And what should we name that? And, and, you know, you're just, it's like a little puzzle, right? You're trying to put the different pieces where they're supposed to go. And, and, you know, you run into some, some problems and that's why you have test groups, right? You put people through, I mean, power 90, the first test group was, was Carl Deichler and John Condon, the, the <laughs> president and CEO. And they would come over to my little two bedroom apartment and they would work out, you know, one of the bedrooms and, you know, they would say, I don't like, I don't know that move next to that move doesn't really work. And it was a very collaborative thing. And it's really, really fun to kind of brainstorm and, and, you know, we're having these little skull sessions where we're trying to figure out 
the formula, you know? And then after that, all right, well then let's put a big group of different kinds of people in a room and see how that works. And then it changed again, right? Oh, you know what? I think we need, you know, that move is too complicated for too many people. And, here, and then we started thinking about, well, let's come up with modifiers, you know? And a lot of programs prior to mine, there was no such thing as modifiers. There was the person in front and all the pretty people in the back and everybody was perfect. And so anybody looking in always felt like, well, I can't do that. Well, this is no good for me. It's because the, the production crew or the, the, the creators didn't understand that there are people at all different kinds of levels. So I always felt like, okay, watch so-and-so. They're going to you know, mellow out here. They're not going to jump as high or they're not going to reach as far or whatever it is and keep an eye on them. And if you look at the Gaim workouts next level, there are three very distinct levels. I mean, we've got cameras on each and every one. And that way you can really, all right, I'm going to focus on level one over here because I'm nowhere near level two and three. And so we really took it a, a step farther. And that process is just a blast, right? And then you're in the actual shooting phase, which is, which is for me, initially, I used to get so nervous and so freaked out. But then as I got better at it, it's like, all right, here we go. And you can tell, if you look at the original Power 90 workouts, hi, everybody, Tony Horton here, and we're going to do some great workouts, and we're going to do some push-ups, and it's going to be great. And then P90X, go! Don't smash <laughs> face, You know what I mean? You can really see how I evolved. Dog hair on my face. Oh, there it is. I got it. Uh, that'll be weird for people to watch. Um, but as you can tell, I just do who I am. And uh, so that that's and, – and then – you know, then it's out there and then you're holding it, right? It's in your hand and you're looking at the discs and you're looking at, you know, because there were photo shoots and there were discussions about the colors and the font and, and then adding the music. You know, it's, it's like making a movie, you know? And then, and then you know, you kind of roll the dice. I don't, I'm not really part of the media part of it. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you hopefully you've got enough good footage and the, the folks that are going to, you know, put this out in an, in an infomercial, you hope it's going to do pretty well. And then Power 90 went, you know, through the roof and P90X went through the roof. And then, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, 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 you know, when I was, when I was making Power 90, I lived in, a, in this apartment for 21 and a half years. Wow. Tw the same apartment. The carpets when I moved in were the same carpets when I moved out. You know, I asked the landlord, I don't know, two dozen times, can you, no, no, just we'll, we'll clean them. You know what I mean? It, it, the carpets went from a carpet to basically... It looked, it was like cement, really. It was just, <laughs> there was no pad left. It was just whatever, right? And then, you know, you make something and it does well. And these royalty checks come in the mail and you pay off, you know, you can, you can buy a new car and you can pay off all your bills and all your Visa cards and all your other cards, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and because I had, you know, like, I don't know how many cards I had, you know, living from whatever, credit card to credit card. And, um, and that, that's amazing. That's an amazing feeling. You know, you feel like it, you feel like, uh, you know, you won the, the lottery or something. And then, you know, they, hey, you don't have to, you know, what you start looking at houses, really houses, <laughs> you know, whatever. And I didn't, you know, I, I was because power 90 had done so well that I went from a two bedroom apartment and I got to skip a couple levels. And I, you know, I ended up buying a four bedroom home with a view of the Hollywood sign in Santa Monica with, with a guest house. I mean, it was nuts, wow. man. It was nuts. Um, and then the house was empty because, you know, eventually that wave came home and then we made P90X and then P90X. Oh, I can put furniture in the house and do it not, you know, so uh, it, it, it's fun. But in between, in between, it's kind of like, okay, let's go, let's go. What's the next one? And you have to kind of wait your turn. That's what happened with Beachbody. You know, he hired Autumn and Shalene and, and Sean T. And when you've got, a, you know, and Sagi and all of a sudden when it was just me and, and uh, uh, who was it? Um, only one one other trainer Debbie Sievers we would rotate so we were always working and then as as the as, as the list of trainers got longer and longer you're waiting longer so it's a little frustrating and you're under contract right so you're under contract so it was like in the old days in the movies you know you'll you'll work and we tell you you can work all right and you're like well I kind of want to work now because I like that feeling of what we were doing before and I want to do that more often um so eventually you know uh it was important for me to kind of say Hey, you know, this has been a great 20 years with Beachbody. I'm still an ambassador for the company. I still love everything they do. You know, I still promote Bod and, and I'm doing, you know, uh, pr promos for double time right now during this, this, uh, this virus situation. So the relationship is still rock solid, but I needed to go, I needed to, I wanted my own supplement line. I wanted my own fitness equipment line. I wanted to do my own, I want to do my next batch of workouts. I wanted to work with more than one company. 
And uh, so now there's much more freedom and uh, still, be, you know, at 61, still pretty fit, still doing all right. Um, people right. still want me around. You know, I'm not so old that, uh, that I, I, people still don't want me, which is nice. Uh, more serious question and kind of the last person I want to ask is um, uh, in 2017, you had a, a pretty big scare. You got diagnosed with Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And uh, I'm just curious, can, can you just talk about that experience and, and what you learned from that? Well, I recovered. To. I re yeah, absolutely. Because that's a critical piece of my life puzzle. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it's stress related. So I had shingles in my ear, you know what I mean? And so there's a lot of nerves in there that go into your brain. And when you get shingles in your ear, it, it can pretty much destroy those nerves. And those nerves have everything to do with, with vision, with hearing, with smell, um, with balance. Right. And, um, and, you know, it's funny when you, when you cut yourself in your, your skin or you break a bone or, or, uh, or you, you know, that those kinds of n normal natural injuries <clears throat> or you tear a muscle, you know, it's like a four to eight week time frame in which things get better. And nerves are like you talk to a doctor, never two years from now, eight years from now. I mean, it's just nerves just take forever and ever and ever and ever the healing process. And for a lot of people, when you, when you burn out a nerve, it never gets better. And so that was really kind of tough, right? So here I was <clears throat> and the stress that was, the stress was probably call, caused by a combination of two things uh, a day apart. So there was the Vegas shooting and I had, I had, a, I had some friends that were there and they witnessed some really amazing, crazy, horrible, horrible things. And they came away unscathed physically Certainly not mentally. And so I just, that, that event, you know, made me so angry, just so angry that something like that could happen in this country. And the following day, Tom Petty died. You know, I mean, I trained Tom for 30 something years. Wow. And, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a good friend. You know, I mean, I went to the birthday parties and hung out with him and I went on tour with him. And, and I, you know, I was there for, you know, when his kids were little and growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, shattered me the combination and I just the combination of being sad and angry <clears throat> and I was going through contract negotiations you know that it, in my opinion weren't going very well and that was really frustrating so I was really ner was nervous I was sad and I was mad <laughs> and so boop, you know I mean I had chicken pox as a kid and if you had chicken pox as a kid then it sits there that virus is sitting there just waiting for you to get bummed out and I did and and, and I just had a massive I, we were having a party one night Friday night like a little dinner party and the right side of my head halfway through the night, just like, Oh my God, I don't, what's going on. And, and it's not something you get a headache. It's not like you rushed to the, to the hospital, to the ER. And if I had known, if I had known, I could have gotten some antivirals and probably nipped it in the bud, but a whole week went by. And so I thought I maybe had had a stroke, you know, I thought, Oh my God, what's going on. So I was going to a physical therapist and, and nobody knew what was going on. And when I went to the, to the ER, I literally, I, I was in the, waiting room and I was vomiting because I was so nauseous and I was so dizzy and everything was out of whack. And uh, they looked at me and they didn't know and they had to Google it. And they go, oh, you have something called Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And they looked at my ear and they go, how long have you had this rash? And I go, what rash? You get this, you, know, you have shingles, it's in your ear. It's in your ear canal. Anyway, um, so, so I was deathly ill for two months. Didn't get out of bed, didn't eat, lost 25 pounds. Um, you know, whatever kind of rehab or we go into a, you know, I think they're called otorhinolaryngologists, ear, nose, and throat guy, doing all these tests. And, uh, you know, my, these nerves were fried. My balance was out of whack. I was incredibly nauseous. I couldn't eat a thing. I couldn't, I, I couldn't drive. I couldn't get out of bed except for to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I was, I was sleeping or pretending to sleep or trying to sleep for 12, 13, 14, 15 hours at a time. And it was awful. I mean, it was awful. You know, several times I would just lay in my, my wife's lap and just weep. You know, I said, I cannot, and because it was relentless. You know what I mean? You break a bone, you know, right? You, you, you get a, a laceration, you know, whatever. You tear a muscle, you, you know, you can kind of semi-function. This was, I can't do anything. And all I want to do is vomit. And the pain is a 12. And it lasted for months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Um, and so, you know, it's funny people are like, how are we doing through this COVID thing? Well, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I might, I might get it. And, um, I already know what horrible is. Right. And so all, everything, every event, every travel thing, all, everything was canceled. Right. So my income, right. 
thank God I had things on the air and you know, I was, I had a contract and I was you know, making money that way, but I wasn't able to do anything like I was. And so, so many things got canceled, unfortunately. And, uh, and, and after about two and a half months, I started to come out of it so slowly. And, um, the, that was the, it was October, 2017. And, uh, you know, here it is now, uh, it's April, 2020, and I still have a little, uh, trace, um, issues, trace issues, not the right way to say that, but I, I still suffer from it on occasion. Um, the other day in the middle of the workout, it just kicked in because when I was getting better, it was always like on a scale of one to 10, a 10 meaning, you know, like it was when I first got it, just horrible. I can't function. I can't get out of the bed. It, it would, it would kind of pare down to a, like a, a five, six, seven, or a, or a, or a, or a four, five, six, you know what I mean? Where I'm miserable and I'm dizzy and, and I can kind of drive, you know what I mean? And I can kind of start to work out again, <clears throat> but it was just really uncomfortable. And then um, I had a huge, I had a, I had a big blood test to make a long story short. I had a blood test and I discovered that I had Epstein-Barr um, in conjunction with the, with, you know, which, so when it's not Ramsey Hunt syndrome anymore, it becomes bilateral vestibular hypofunction, which is like a form of PTSD. Um, a lot of people who are in Iraq and Afghanistan come back with it. And it's just a balance thing. Like they got some, they got blown up. You know what I mean? They survived, they got blown up and all the nerves in their ear because it's an ear thing and a, and a brain thing. And so I was going to the same rehab person as people who are coming back from, from the Middle East. And uh, it took a lot of rehab to learn, learn how to walk again. I learned how to walk in a straight line. And I remember my first job about six months afterward, it was in Las Vegas. And I had to use my, my um, carry-on luggage as a cane a, 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 on, with wheels to get through the lobby and to get to my room. And when I was on stage, I had to focus to walk from the back of the stage to the mic. You know what I mean? Um, and so even now, here it is, I don't know, over two years later, and I still deal with it. And I'm 90, 97% better, but I had this episode like out of the blue about five days ago where I, I, I was like walking and bang and I fell into a wall, you know? So you deal with it, man, you deal with it. But the, the, what's the lesson here? The lesson here is that, uh, you know, I'm in a better place than I was and um, it's something I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. And most of the time I have really good days and occasionally I have some bad ones. Um, but as a 61 year old, I'm fitter than I've ever been probably as a result of this thing. Wow. You know, and a lot of people who get what I get, Ramsey Hunt syndrome that turns into the bilateral vestibular hypofunction, function, uh, live in a very secluded um, life. You know what I mean? They, maybe they can drive again, but there's, but they don't, they don't, maybe, you know, and I try to tell people, you got to, you got to do 10 times now than what you did before. You know what I mean? You got to be relentless about your rehab, relentless about your diet. <clears throat> relentless about your workouts, you know, get on a slack line, do yoga where, you know, I, I do yoga now and I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to be a domino in, in warrior three or half moon <laughs> pose. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm still trembling. You know, if you, I, I, I've been doing these um, Wednesday night plyo classes and there's two exercises where you do on one foot and you know, I'm like an 80 year old man, right? It's, it's uh, whatever, you know, I'm exposing myself to folks who are watching me fail. And so, you know, that's relatable because they're probably going through similar things, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No um, problem. With the time that uh, we have left, uh, I do want to go into the lightning round. Um, I guess just on the health and fitness side, can you just talk about, I guess I'll just leave this really, really wide open, but what have you learned about longevity? If you could do one workout for the rest of your life, what would you do? Any, any uh, habits that you share with people? One where I would do chest and back every day if, if, if it had value to be every day. I love pull-ups and push-ups, man. I love ninja courses and ropes and pegboards. I just love, you know, I think I was a monkey in a past life. And I'm, <laughs> I don't know, who knows? Uh, I was Teddy Roosevelt and a monkey in a past life. I just love that. I hate cardio, but I do it because it's probably the most important thing next to yoga. Um, yeah, you know, because at my age, at 61, speed, balance, and range of motion go first, right? So that's why I get my treadmill and sprint. That's why I do martial arts because it's fast. You know, and balance, you know, even though I'm not very good at it now, I, I work on it so that it doesn't deteriorate even more, right? And then flexibility. I mean, you look at old folks, even old folks who train often, they're still doing the same routines they did in high school and college. You, you, I mean, that's nuts. You got to expose yourself to things that are going to really, really 
push you, you know? And so, uh, you know, that's why I still do yoga. That's why I still do cardio. That's why I still do, uh, you know, martial arts stuff. And I keep the variety up. I don't lift as, I don't lift weights as much as I used to because they're, they're rough on my joints. I do body weight stuff, you know what I mean? But I do crazy body weight stuff. I climb ropes upside down and do whatever, you know? Um, yeah, there you go. All right, let's dive into the lightning round. Uh, just a bunch of fun questions. What is the best advice you've ever received and who gave it to you? Oh man, I, 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 never, I never had great mentors the entire time. I, I, the books I read were my mentors. So whether it was Keith Ellis or M. Scott Peck or Wayne Dyer or, or uh, Gary Zukoff or you know, whoever I was reading at the time, I'm a collection of information over the course of decades. <clears throat> I think that the, the first person that really changed my perspective about exercise, and I don't even remember his name, which is really too bad, which was a weightlifting coach that I had in college. Oh. And uh, because he was funny and he was relatable and he treated us like, like uh, peers oh. and not like just punk kids, you know, and I really enjoyed his company and I really look forward to that class. And I wanted to work really hard for him because he was just a great guy. And uh, that was sort of the beginning for me. And then, you know, those first books, those first personal development books. I mean, I was self-taught mostly, you know what I mean? My dad was traveling Monday through Friday. You know what I mean? There were no coaches or trainers that I had in high school or college that I had, that I really cared for. So um, yeah, that's the answer to that one. You could put a quote on a billboard for everyone to read. What would it say? Do your best and forget the rest. Love it. I was do waiting all interview best, for that. Man. Just do whatever it is. And your best changes day to day, hour to hour, month to month. But just, you know what I mean? Um, another one is, uh, you know, the more you do, the better you get. So, you know, repetitive, being consistent, right? Purpose, plan, accountability, variety. You know, I write about that in my book. Um, having a plan, having goals, surrounding yourself with really good mentors. You know what I mean? Getting rid of the people in your life. I know it's hard that they're just dragging you down and you got to do it and you have to have those conversations. That's kind of a combination platter, but you know, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Best purchase <laughs> you've made in the last year for a hundred dollars or less. I'll say that one again, Doug. Best purchase you've made in the last year for a hundred dollars or less. Oh my gosh. Oh, a hundred dollars or less. Okay. Well, mm. Mm. <laughs> you, are you all right? You ready? Uh, toilet paper. <laughs> Tom and I stocked, stocked up on, because we have these Paragon events here at our house. We have like 30 people in from around the world. We had to cancel our March one. Uh, we've had three so far. We had three in 20, 2019. And we hope to have a couple more here in 2020. But we always like, uh oh, you know, because we're going to have a lot of people here. So we get cases and cases of toilet paper. Yes. I haven't had to buy any since. So. That is one answer I've never had before. So thank you. Well, it's true. <laughs> True. Um, is there, you've got to hang out with some really cool people in your life. Is there anyone on the planet left that you'd like to have lunch with? Who's number one? I, I, Stephen Colbert. I want to, I want to, I want to have lunch with Stephen Colbert, man. I just, uh, and Tom Hanks. I just want to hang out with Tom Hanks. You know what I mean? I Can just, you make that happen? Is it going to happen? I don't know, man. I was supposed to be on Colbert's old show on, on Comedy Central. Um, but I got, I got bumped or I'm, or my pre-interview sucked. I'm not sure. I think I might've embarrassed myself. Hmm. you know what I mean like you know because I would you know I'm just a huge fan and uh you know I think he's spot on so yeah maybe one of these days Steven if you're listening or watching come on man I think you're fantastic and I'd be a great guest come on, let's do it there we go maybe this will be the thing that makes it happen uh do you uh, listen to podcasts and if if so do you have a favorite podcast you know I don't I, I I really don't and everybody's asked me to have my own I think I just have too many balls in the air and, um, uh, and I just, uh, Joe Rogan, I've checked out his a couple times because people say, hey, check this one out. Um, but I think my new favorite one's going to be this guy, Doug Smith. Doug Smith. Oh, thank you. He's my man, my new man right there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, what are you passionate about right now? Uh, I'm passionate about my supplement line. I, I, it's really, really, it's been a long haul. It's taken longer than I expected, but we've, we've crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. And we've made some amazing formulas. I'm really proud of them. I'm proud of, I'm proud about the way the bottles look, the, the photos, the, and, and mostly the contents, you know what I mean? What we've been able to do, you know, we've got two plant-based uh, protein powders, chocolate and vanilla, two whey, 
And these are grass-fed Irish cows, man. I even met the people from Ireland that oh, take cool. care of these cows, which is really cool. And the combination of, of vitamin D and, and BCAAs and something called HMB, um, uh, it, it's the, the studies are amazing about HMB. And it really shows that even if you're coming out of surgery or something and you're older like me or even in their 70s, uh, it can help actually uh, create muscle mass from not doing anything, you know what I mean? And so I've, I've noticed a lot of changes in myself because I work out like a maniac. And there's something called um, a sarcopenia, which is, a, you know, which is just when you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, it's just, you know, it's age-related muscle loss. It's just going to happen. And we've come up with a formula that's going to kind of help slow that or stop that for some people. And that's, that's cool. So I'm really, I'm really, really excited about that. And, and the next level workouts with Guy and I, they're fun. People love them. Not everybody knows about them yet. You know, they're still doing a, a beach body products that I've done, which, you know, it's fantastic too. Uh, but those are really, really great. And a lot of the original cast members. So, you know, it was fun to do that. I can't wait to do some more. That's great. Uh, do you have any unusual habits that enable you to be successful? Um, that's a great question. Um, yeah, man. It's just kind of a, 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 I write everything down. I write everything down and I have notes everywhere. I have a notepad in my shower. That's waterproof. Really? Yeah. You, just, you <laughs> stick awesome. it up on the wall. It's got two little spots. And I, and like I always get inspiration in the shower. Uh, of course I have a pad next to the sink where I brush my teeth, where I get ready in the morning. Right. They're, you know, so because I don't want to go back into the shower, write things down. I've got notepads, different size notepads, wow. with things written on them. Right. And Does Shauna you know, love this? Notepads everywhere? Is she a fan? Yeah, no, no, yeah, because she borrows them all the time. She's always <laughs> she'll write it down, take it on her desk. I mean, literally, look at this, man. This is all, these are all to do things here, right? So, um, and, uh, and so what I do is I go through the, my lists and I cross them out. And, and that's, that's a, you know, that's a simple habit. Uh, another one is too, is just, um, is making sure that I'm dealing with the people in my life that, that work for me well. You know what I mean? Like I'm, everybody's up to speed, you know, and some, but in the old days when I wasn't good at, I wasn't good at managing people. And now I'm just checking in all the time. Hey, do we have everything lined up? Is this, you know, cause I got a manager, Shauna works for me. I have an assistant. Um, I have two social media people. And then of course all the people at Guy MTV Fit and Yoga, all the people at, at Golden Hippo that are making my, my, my uh, supplement line just making sure that I'm staying on top of all that. You know, people say, what do you do throughout the day? It's just managing those things. I mean, you wake up to 50 emails and, you know, 20 texts. That, that takes some time to get through that stuff. And before, you know, I would let, I wouldn't, I wasn't as good at it. I think I'm better now because I made those mistakes. I don't want to make them anymore. Do you have a, a routine, a morning routine, or do you just wake up and check email and texts? I, I don't. It depends on the day because my routine, especially now, especially now with this virus, um, you know, I would have my early morning workouts and buddies of mine would show up and, and do it. And I'd have my afternoon, late afternoon post work, not for me, cause I work at home, but I had my friends would finish work and I'd have another group of people showing up at six o'clock or six 30. Um, and so that's all been shattered. And now I'm, I'm falling into my natural rock and roll pattern of staying up really late and sleeping in. Right. And setting up a podcast like this at 11 o'clock with you. <laughs> right. So I used to have, you know, I used to have them at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I had workouts at, at, at seven 30 or, or yeah, seven 30. And then I'd have, I'd have something after that, or I'd eat or I'd do a post recovery thing. So my pattern is completely out of whack right now, but I'm sure once things normalize, it'll go back. Yeah. We talked about a, a bucket list person you'd want to meet with. Is there anything on your bucket list left to do? What would be like the top thing on your bucket list experience? You know, I've done a lot of, because of the, the success of, of all these programs, I mean, I've gone heli skiing, which is, was always on that list. And then that's, you know, um, something I'll hopefully continue to do. Um, I think one of them is, is to be successful. This next stage is to be successful enough to be able to buy my wife a little ranch in oh, Wyoming. Awesome. Or in, or in Arizona or something, you know what I mean? Have a property. I've, my, I've always wanted a property with a stream that runs through it hmm. and a pond that freezes that I can skate on. You know what I mean? A couple of horses out in the field for, for my wife. I don't really ride. I mean, I do ride, but I'm, you know, it's not my own my thing. But just to be able to provide that for my wife because she works so hard for me and she's so amazing and I love her so dearly. I just would love to just say, hey, guess what? You know, the vitamins are doing great. The equipment line is doing great. All these other things are doing great. 
And so I just want to work, continue to work really, really hard to be able to provide that for her. I mean, we got a pretty good setup. You know, we got a, we live up in the hills. We've got incredible views. We've got a, we have a, a small little place in Jackson Hole when, you, when we want to go there and ski. But I, yeah, my bucket list is, you know, I've jumped out of airplanes, dude. I've been in two jet fighters flying upside down and all around and done, you know, I've, I've been to 62 military bases around the world. Um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, I just want to ski and I want to hang out on my ranch with my wife and I, my bucket list is filled. All right. Well, hey, we'll push that link out and uh, hopefully everyone listening to this can help make that dream come true. Um, if you could go back and have coffee with 20 year old Tony, what would you tell him? 20 year old Tony. Uh, I, I wouldn't give him any advice. Hmm. I would I would say, dude, just do what you're doing. I'd say a little less procrastination, maybe drink a little less beer. <laughs> smoke a little less pot really it's probably better off if you'd get off the weed and get off the booze i mean that all happened anyway it happened probably four years afterward you know what i mean like i just went oh i'm working out a lot of mexico i think i'm bad you know i mean i haven't had a drink i can't 30 years 35 years i don't know it's been forever wow. and um yeah you know i mean would it have sped things up for me a little bit no i mean everything happened i think for a reason and you know i was kind of lazy then and I was procrastinating then and I was partying too much then and then again so was everybody else around me um but I was able to you know meet enough of the right people have a decent enough work ethic that I could kind of begin to sort of make my way to where I am now which is which is pretty great you know what I mean I mean do I wish I was do I wish I had more money in the bank sure like everybody else do I wish I had that ranch for my wife already yeah sure um but I'm um, you know um, it is what it is. And I'm trying to be present. I'm trying to be in the moment. I'm trying to work really hard. You know what I mean? I've, I've got 22 failed businesses in the process of all this. Wow. You know, I had my own watches. That didn't work. Had my own sunglasses. That didn't work. Had my own mouth guard. That didn't work. Had my own clothing line four times. That didn't work. Had six TV pilots. None of those took off. Wow. You know what I mean? And so, you know, what do we, what do I, what do you learn from that? You know, whatever water under the bridge, move on, keep moving. You know what I mean? And so is my brand new fitness equipment a line that's not quite out yet? Is that going to blow up? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm going to keep pursuing it because I enjoy you're going it. for it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, many years from now, when you're looking back on your life, what do you want to be remembered for? And what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, yeah, that I, that I did everything that I could to help as many people as I, as I could, you know, I mean, you know, your story, when we were, we, before we started the, the podcast, you were telling me my story and how I was able to change your life. Um, you know, uh, it, it, that's, that just, God, that just fills me up. It just fills me up. I feel like, you know, because when I was younger, I always, everything, I always felt like I was coming up short all the time, every day. Like, God, was that the best I could do today? Was this week worth, you know, anything? God, I don't feel like I accomplished anything this month. Boy, 1987 sucked. You know what I mean? I don't have any of those feelings anymore. I don't. I just feel like, wow, I've got an, I've got an amazing wife. I have a beautiful home. Um, I'm able to kind of do almost anything I want to do. And, it, and it, all, it was all as a result of being able to help people. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I was selling, you know, weapons or, or, nuclear plutonium or what or whatever you know what i mean it was it was because i was helping people i mean one of the stories this one kid contacts me and uh it turns out that this kid a total stranger is a friend of family members of mine it, was, it blew my mind he was he was uh out of shape overweight was in the best shape of his life he was like 80 plus days in a p90x and fell off a three-story building into an alley because he fell over some bricks, it was dark, they didn't have any light. He fell off a building. He broke everything. Wow. Broke his face, eye sockets, arms, wrists, fingers, ribs, because he landed upper body first. The only thing, he didn't, he didn't break his legs was the only thing, everything else was destroyed. He, he, his, um, he was uh, pronounced dead three times. <clears throat> Priest came in to give him his, you know, his final, a couple times, you know, and he goes, P90X kept me from dying. Cause I, you know, I talked to my surgeons, set multiple surgeries later. 
And uh, I got that note and I had a phone number at the bike because he contacted me through my website. And I called him up and he said, all my doctors said, if I was in the shape I was in, if I didn't have the basics muscular structure that I had, I, I would have I died on the spot. Wow. I mean, come on, man. I, I, I was at death's door. I was a full-blown alcoholic drug addict. Um, I had OD'd a bunch of times. Uh, my girl left me. I was out of a job. Then some friend of mine introduced me to P90X. I became a trainer. I married the woman of my dreams, and I have three kids. And the fitness is part of my life now. That, you know, those are just two. And there are hundreds of stories like that. Yeah. Hundreds. I haven't I've collected them. I'm going to write a book and just have those stories in, those, in that book. So, yeah, you know, I want to keep doing that. I want to do that yeah. till like, when are you going to retire? Retire? I like my gig. I'm going to keep doing my gig. I mean, I'll, I'll take more days off, man. But. So oh, yeah. that, that, that legacy right there, I, I, you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Very fortunate. One well, one of those stories is I told you so. Thank you for transforming my life. I can't imagine my life without you. And uh, is there anything else you want to leave our listeners with today? Um, gosh, no, I think we covered a lot. Yeah, I mean, usually at the end, I have a little sort of a, uh, you know, I'll leave with this. I'll leave with this. If you feel like you're stuck and you feel like there's a, you're not quite where you want to be in your life, whatever, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do, a lot of things that we can read, a lot, you know, there's a lot of, practices that that we hope will 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 alter things and change things but i know that there's i know there's one thing that's true for everyone it's a universal truth right so there's not there's not very many of those but um there's two things that we can control for sure 100 percent. what we decide to eat and whether we decide to move or not physically on, on any particular day the traffic the weather your family whatever the coronavirus work you know, I mean, there's so many things that are out of our control. And it's those things that are out of our control that makes us crazy, that, that creates all this frustration and fear and trepidation, right? So, you know, it really comes out of brain chemistry, you know? And so when you're eating the right kinds of food, because, you know, I had this bilateral vestibular hypo hypofunction and Epstein-Barr, and I dramatically changed my diet, and that has been suppressed. Like, the Epstein-Barr is gone. I, I mean, I had that, and, I, and it's literally, it's like narcolepsy, it's just... You're exhausted all the time. And so diet is huge. You know, you are what you eat. Jack Lane said that, you know, uh, half a century ago, and it's still true. Because when you eat right, when you exercise, and you got to be consistent. It's got to be five to six days a week. It can't be three or four. If you work out two, three, four days a week, four is even not enough. You end up with what I call exercise bi bipolar disorder. Because when you do eat the right foods and you exercise consistently, you release norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, brain-derived neurotropic factor, it's virtual miracle growth for the brain. It happens inside your temporal lobe, inside your dentate gyrus. It's this little tiny thing. It's smaller than your picky finger. And when you exercise, molecules and proteins start to vibrate. They come together. They change your perspective, improve your memory, your cognition, your sex drive. The glass is half full. I mean, it changes everything about your ability to deal with all the things that are outside of your control so that you can have a level of productiv productivity you never thought you could have. And it's purely because... You moved your body and you made good food choices because it all, everything comes from up inside of your noggin. And if you're inconsistent with those things, then everything in your life will be inconsistent. So if you want to assert you, if you want your life, it's not going to go like this. Yay. It's going to go like this as opposed to like that. Right. Hmm. Because nobody's getting younger. We're always aging. So sarcopenia and a lot of other things, you know, internal organs, brain function, it slows down. Exercise and diet keeps that from happening. I mean, when I'm 91, am I going to still be, you know, on the slack line and on the pegboard? God, I hope so. But <laughs> that's it. Move your body. Make good food choices, especially now during what's going on around the world. I don't understand why so many people who are dealing with very tough times make really bad choices so they can make that situation worse. I, that is, I mean, you know, that's how we are, right? I mean, as human beings, we always have a tendency to take the, take the easy road. But if you're willing to put in the time and make better choices, you'll notice in a week or two or three that you're able to, to deal with this much, much better. And you'll have a completely different story at the end. And I know you want that. So there you go. So good, Tony. It was so great to meet you and uh, spend an hour with you. This is going to add massive value to our listeners. So thank you. And thanks again for everything you do.
Doug, you're the man. Uh, great questions, man. I really, really enjoyed that. Sometimes these aren't, these aren't always fun, but that was fun. And I want to thank you so much for, for having me on today.